Well, hey guys, and welcome back. It's Major Cunningham from the Astro Department. I wanted to cut a video about uh, elliptical home and transfers, which, uh, you know, I've got the, the homework here from last time. And in a rare case, I'm actually going to look at the homework um, and, and work through it because it's a good example. And I actually uh, cooked it up in STK to show you what it really looks like because I think, again, as, you know, as always, I'm a big visuals guy. So I think the visuals are important. The homework gives you the following situation. It says, see if I can get close to the camera. Of course, you guys have it on your own, I'm sure. But you start off in this elliptical orbit. And you want to, first of all, find where the most efficient place to do the burn is. I'll talk about that in a second. But the goal is to get this satellite in this bigger elliptical orbit deorbited into an, an orbit that's so low and so close to the Earth that it burns in within a couple of hours. Like it, uh, the atmosphere provides enough resistance that it, takes the last bit of energy out of that orbit and the satellite plummets back to Earth in a fiery fireball. Okay, put that aside for now. And I'll go ahead and just write out what I have here. It says, okay, uh, first of all, actually, what I'm going to do, with your guys' permission, I'm going to draw a highly exaggerated and colored and highlighted version of this problem okay so let's see how great my art skills are today not great as usual there's the earth Whee. There's, okay all right this is an even more exaggerated version of the picture that you were given but I mean I'm trying to still do the same problem so so it says the mission orbit, which is, let's, uh, you know what, let's highlight blue for mission orbit. So there's outer orbit. Oh, trying to follow the line. This marker is almost dead. This final achievement will be teaching you home and transfers, and then it will die. I give you permission to buy. Just kidding. Okay. There you go. So the satellite has been happily beeping and booping in this outer blue orbit. And what we'd like to do is do a couple of burns in home and transfer style that bring it into this oh, this pink inner orbit. only has an altitude of 130 kilometers that's what the problem says and just to tell you that is so low that nothing lasts up there for more than a few hours at the most maybe a couple days depends but depends on a lot of things actually it's a tough problem to solve turns out when a satellite exactly is going to re-enter and then where it's going to hit on the earth as you guys might imagine though it's actually kind of an important problem uh, let's see so, our intent is going to be to do a transfer orbit somewhere around here to get us from the blue orbit to the pinks, from the outer to the inner. Okay, I'm not going to hide the ball on this one. Just going to go ahead and tell you. Most efficient place to do a burn, and this is going to be true for, for plane changes too, uh, but the most efficient place to do a burn uh, is as far away in the orbit as you can. So, you might ask yourself, well, what's the farthest point in any orbit? away from the central body, away from the Earth. Well, of course, it's, it's Apogee, which I have, let's see. That's why I did it again in STK, so it would actually make more precise visuals than my art. But let's say this is Apogee, right? And like, let's say this is where our satellite starts for this problem, okay? Beep, beep. I'll just tell you, the, the first burn needs to be accomplished out here. Now, let's give ourselves a little more background. I'm going to say the satellite has been going this direction, counterclockwise in its orbit. Okay, And then when it finally comes up to this point, it does a little burn against the direction of its motion to slow it down and put it in a, in a uh, smaller orbit. So it's going to do... 
little burn like this right there's the there's the thrust coming up <laughs> the direction of the thrust pushes it this way a little bit right but all of its little jet streams all of its little streams of gas are coming out like that and it gives a little force this direction so what's the the net result of that is going to be to put it in a transfer orbit that's also elliptical and the idea is it's going to oh <laughs> it's going to bring us down to this point in the pink orbit which incidentally is perigee of the transfer orbit but of course the transfer orbit we only do one orbit's worth so or what oh wrong uh, a half orbit's worth anyway let's try and see if this will let me highlight uh, kind of a yellow i want it to be green but yellow will, will work for our purposes for the transfer orbit okay cool and of course the transfer orbit's going in this direction okay well now we've kind of got the story so and for me I, ever since i learned how to do these um, learning what the story is and keeping it first and foremost in my mind has been so so important so uh at let's just keep going with the color theme here um once the satellite has reached apogee of its mission orbit, that's where we want to do the burn because we'll get the most bang for our buck as far as thrust goes. So like if we do a little thrust out here, as opposed to trying to do our, our burn somewhere closer to the Earth, uh, it's just the most fuel efficient. So let's say the velocity right before we do our burn, I'm going to call V1. And the velocity right after we do our burn, I call VT1. It's supposed to be a little cursive T, V sub T1. And then the satellite's going to travel for a little bit. We're actually going to figure out how long. And then it's going to do another burn in here, closer to the Earth, much closer to the Earth, to put it in this final mission orbit. So this, the speed we do right before our burn, we'll call VT2, and the velocity of just this orbit I'm going to call V2. I want to highlight them to keep them separated, if you will. Just to associate each velocity uh, colorfully with the orbit that it's associated with. Okay, I may do it for the colors for now. Anyway, let me also write out here how we're going to do this. Now, it's funny because the, the picture, huh, as we've drawn it here, and as it's presented to you on the homework, has the satellite going from right to left on the sheet of the page. That's, of course, perfectly realistic. Happens all the time. But it's going to belie the order in which we calculate these things. So for me, you don't have to do it this way. They're all independent. All of these velocities are, are independent as far as you calculating them. But I start with V1 in the story, and I work my way around methodically till I get to V2. So here's what that's going to mean. V1. Let's think about V1. V1 is at the very edge, the very end of our elliptical orbit as far as we can get away from the Earth. So we're going to use the elliptical velocity equation for that. But as always, where we make our money is plugging in the right R's and the right E's. Okay. So here's where some colors will come in handy again. Um, I'm going to scooch the earth down a little bit so this doesn't look so terrible. Satellite is out here oh, geez. at an R position of apogee of its mission orbit. 
right? Keeping the blue theme going. As a blue class at the Academy anyway, it makes me happy to see blue, right? Pleasing, comforting to me. Okay. That's where we begin. So the R that we're going to use is this R sub A that I highlighted in blue. Okay, epsilon. You guys remember specific mechanical energy. Oh, there we go. This is negative mu over 2a. Ah, now which a? This is going to be the center major axis of the transfer, or not so, not, not the transfer orbit, mission orbit. So let me see if I can just draw this. Oops. Right down the middle here. I'm really taking my time with this picture because I think it will pay dividends as far as helping folks understand where we are in the problem. But I'm, um, of course, open to feedback that, man, you took too long with the picture, dude. It's like, yeah, some of us aren't gifted with the gift of art. That's me. Okay. So this is the sun major axis. This width, right, from halfway of our mission orbit to one edge or the other of our mission orbit. Cool. That's the A we're going to plug in to our epsilon here. We're not even going to do anything right now. We're just going to set up the problem. Okay? That's, the, that's the idea here. All right. Now, after we've done our first burn, we're going to have a different velocity, right? We're going to be at velocity v sub t1. So the transfer orbit, this yellow orbit, is you can see it's elliptical. It's also elliptical. So we have to use the elliptical orbit equation again. But we're going to use different r's and different a's possibly. So let's see here. Let's break it out like we did before. OK, right instantaneously after we've done the burn, you guys can see we're still out here at r sub a. So this is going to be r sub a that we plug in here. And then for this epsilon, though, this is what's going to change. Because now we're going to use the seven major axis of the transfer orbit. And we're going to have to calculate that. But it's going to look something like the radius at apogee of our mission orbit Plus, now let's label this. We haven't labeled this yet. The radius, not at apogee or perigee because it's a circle, but just the radius. I'm going to call it R2 of our final orbit. Our burn-in orbit, if you want to call it that, because that's, that's very much what it is. So RA plus R2 over 2. So in keeping with my scheme so R2 R A. Oh, of course I freaking put the wrong color. Yeah, that didn't help much, did it? We'll rewrite it. There we go. It's radius of apogee of the mission orbit. There we go. <laughs> All right. That'll give us semi-major semi -major axis of our transfer orbit. All right. It's all coming together. Love it when a plan comes together. I'm actually just going to move this up and keep working on this sheet of paper. Now that I think about it, you know what? Here's how we're going to do it. Calling, I'm calling an audible. I'm going to staple these together. 
Love it when a plan comes together. Ah. P.S. This is an instructional aid. This is me teaching. Once you guys are used to it, you will not need two sideways hot dog style pieces of paper. Okay. But since I've written so big, <laughs> I need extra paper, which whatever. Get myself a little something to work on here. Okay. All right. So then V2 or VT2. Let's follow the story. Like we've traveled. We did our first, we were traveling, blah, 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 we're traveling in a mission orbit, did our first burn, put us in this yellow orbit. Now we're going to do our second burn. And right before our second burn, we're going to be going a velocity of V sub T2. Are we still in an elliptical orbit? Yes, we are. So we have to use the classics, right? All the oldies in the elliptical orbit equation. Again, for the third time, if you, had, if you only had a nickel for every time you've had to do these equations, you would have many nickels. <laughs> Seven cents. I don't know. That doesn't even make sense. All right. So let's label it out like we have before. Which R are we going to use? Well, now in the story, we've already traveled all the way through this transfer orbit. And now we are at R2. We're at the distance from the center of the Earth out to this final tiny, tiny, very close to Earth orbit, which we've been covering with pink and labeling with pink because it's the final orbit. So, uh, uh, specific mechanical energy is still negative mu over 2a, but the question is which a? Well, we're still technically at the last tiny fraction of a second before we do our final burn to put us into that mission orbit, so we're still in technically the transfer orbit, so a sub t, which we have been labeling with the yellow And that's great. Okay, so that's going to be that. And then, of course, B2 is very easy and quick since the final orbit is circular. We could just use mu over R2. Okay, so we labeled it out. We're set to go. Let's start plugging and chugging. Because now that we've set up the problem, and this is what you guys will see, after you set up the problem, things fall away really quickly if you know what you're doing. But what intimidates people is just drawing the picture and having it sort of make sense to them and guide them. Everyone learns differently. I, I'm a, very much a visual learner, so drawing the picture and knowing where I am in the story, if you will, seriously, like a movie storyboard, same thing. That's how I learn. So that's why I've done it like this. Hopefully it's of some help to you. But either way, if you're not like that, you can still follow the process. Um, and here's the process for those of you who want to do it just kind of even without a picture. If you can just do it in your head, then bravo for you. This is kind of your first step, second step. Third step, fourth step. I guess you could, you could do it like that if that's how you want. But All right, so let's actually run the numbers on. V sub 1, so that's square root of mu over r to mu over r plus epsilon. All right, I'll just keep trucking here. Two times 39860.5 over. And we said we were going to use r sub a raised at apogee. Well, we haven't calculated that yet. Uh-oh. Let's do a little housekeeping. Give ourselves our toolbox up here. Radius at apogee, straight off the equation sheet, we find is a times 1 plus e. Now, the problem told us a couple of things. Let's bring in what the, the problem told us. It said that the semi-major axis of the mission orbit is 78, 78 kilometers. Kind of nice and even. It said the eccentricity of that orbit is 0.15. And so we'll have no trouble finding our radius at apogee of the mission orbit. Let's 
Okay. Whatever that ends up being. And then like we said, mu, or uh, epsilon, sorry, specific mechanical energy is negative mu over 2a, which a, well, the a were given of the transfer, or of the uh, mission orbit. Golly. Never forget your two. That messes things up a lot for folks. All right, let's plug and chug. Oops. So for that, get 6.115. Uh, of course, that's kilometers per second. Great. Okay, next thing's next. V sub T1. Okay, we're going to again follow the, the guide that we gave ourselves. Mu over R sub A. The guide being up here, right? I'm going to plug in R sub A here. And then minus... Epsilon, of course, that epsilon is going to be this epsilon with negative mu over 2 sub a of the transfer orbit. We need to calculate a of the transfer orbit. Let's do that up here in our little housekeeping area. Ra, which we found, plus R2 of the final burn-in orbit. So the radius at apogee we found to be, oh, we didn't actually fully express it. I just plugged it in, so to avoid math errors and rounding errors. But it ends up being 9059.7 plus that second radius, which is, uh, let's see, R2. I'll put it right above here. <laughs> Things get messy. 6378, which is the radius of the Earth, plus 130, which was the altitude they gave us, but they didn't give us the radius or the sun major axis. So we have to calculate that ourselves. But we're like math MacGyvers. We can do this. Easy. 6508.137. Okay, so 6508.137 is the radius of our second orbit. We divide all that by 2. And that gives us... Seventy-seven, eighty-three point. I'm going to carry all the digits, uh, kilometers, just so I can avoid errors if possible. Oh, okay, now we're ready to plug. Now we are ready to plug and chug. We both know we must plug and chug now. Okay. Watched Batman recently, so have Bane, Bane voice in my in my head. Can't get it out. Okay, so what did we find out for R sub A? We found out that it was ninety fifty nine point seven minus thirty nine eight six zero zero point five over two times semi drax of the transfer orbit, which was seventy seven eighty. 3.9185. Cool. Now it's time to plug and chug. OK, 
Okay, and this is this gives us a velocity right after our burn of 6.065 kilometers per second. So, well, I'm gonna have to go to another sheet of paper. V delta V1. Let's do this. Absolute value of the transfer orbit velocity out of apogee there right after the burn. Minus that initial velocity we found. Alrighty. Zero point. Oh golly, I get zero four nine eight five. Let's do nine nine on that one. Kilometers per second. Look how tiny of a burn. Not very big. It's all we needed to get from our mission orbit to enter the transfer orbit. Great. Now let's do V2, or VT2 rather, sorry, in the story, that's what we're doing next. Following our little guide we made for ourselves. Same equation, since we're still technically the very second, the infinitesimal second right before we do our last burn. So we are at the distance R2 from the Earth. You guys remember, we've traveled all the way through our transfer orbit now. We're about to do the second burn out there at V sub T2. So we are R2 worth of kilometers away from the Earth. Oof, I wrote that. Okay. Plus epsilon. And then this epsilon, as we saw up here, is going to be that semi major axis uh, of the transfer orbit again. That's what we're going to use in that. So let's plug. T times three nine eight six zero zero point five over R sub two, which was we found we had to calculate it, but we found it sixty five oh eight point one three seven minus three nine eight six zero zero point five over. 2 times the size of the transfer, semi major axis of the transfer orbit, which is 7783.85. Now let's plug and chug. Okay, that's good. Then multiply that by two, then square root of that. 8.44. Holy gosh, it's going really fast. Now, let's find V2. Whew, finally, some easy math. Kind of like Gordon Ramsay on the cooking show. Finally, some good food. Finally, some easy math. And the square root two six. Okay. Ooh, almost the bottom of the paper. Delta V two equals absolute value of V sub D two minus V two. Ah! 8443, which we found, minus 7. Oops. Units, units, units. Don't get dinged for points on units. I'm lazy about it, and I need not be lazy about it. Okay. Okay, so I get that to be 0. 0.617 kilometers per second. Okay, so our total delta V. 
Oh man, I think I can fit it all in here. It's delta V1 plus delta V2. So that equals that very small initial delta V, 499 plus oops, 0 0.617. So what I get. Is just about zero point six six seven kilometers per second to bring our satellite back in and burn it up. Okay, now we are almost done. And by the way, you'll notice that the answers I'm getting are ever so slightly different than the answer key in the cadet answer key. The reason is I did this with quote unquote with you guys, if you will, doing it with a calculator, plugging in numbers that carried a tiny bit of a rounding error. And the way we sometimes or often do our cadet answer uh, keys is we will use Python or MATLAB to program it in, which means the computer carries the full length of, you know, the decimal places out to the nth degree um, of each number and doesn't truncate them or round them or adulterate them in any way so you get a slightly different answer now that's okay especially on grs all right because you guys don't have access to matlab and python programming in your computer so if you're within so for example i guess what i'm trying to say is the cadet answer key says the delta v total is 0.6673 and i got it to be technically 0.6669 we're so close. We're so close, and you're going to get full credit for that. If I were a student doing this on the GR, you'll get full credit for that. So, in the event, there's where that comes from. Uh, let's see here. You know what? I'll just do it on a sheet of paper here, and I'll kind of do make myself a little separate box. The reason I'm going to do this is we have one more thing to do because it says, How long will this maneuver take? Hmm. Time of flight is what they're asking for. Well, what do we know? We know that the, uh, the full orbit, if we were to stay in that transfer orbit for a full orbit, it would be 2 pi times square root of a cubed over mu, and that's supposed to be my little cursive T again. But would you buy that we only spend this much time, this much time, and I say this much as if that actually helps you, we spend half an orbit in the transfer orbit. So we don't spend the full orbit, so we want to know how long half a transfer orbit takes. So let's divide that by 2. Oh boy. Let's see here. Push this up. Square root of 7783.185. Over nine eight six zero zero point five. Okay, great. Square root of that, and don't forget to multiply it by pi thirty four seventeen. Just shy of an hour. Okay. We did it. All right. Now what I want to show you guys, and uh, this is something I had to, or I wanted to do for myself because uh, in, in my classes, we had some really good discussions that actually made me do some research and think to myself uh, about how I wanted to, I don't know, how I wanted to teach it. And then it made me, want to visualize the orbit even better. So what I've done is I, I put it into STK, uh, Systems Toolkit, which is a really, really good, it's the one of the industry standard orbit visualization tools. Uh, and the reason I want to show you guys, so let me go ahead and bring up the animation here. So look look at this. First of all, just kind of, I have, I have all the orbits that we drew, you know, mission orbit, transfer orbit, and final orbit. Um, if you remember my picture, it was so exaggerated. Look how close to circular these things really are. Like the, the mission orbit with an eccentricity of 0.15, it still looks 
pretty much like a circle, just a little bit tiny squished. And look how close in that uh, pink final mission orbit is. Uh, and then you can barely tell, you can barely see the green transfer orbit uh, because it is, it's, it's eccentricity. I calculated this on my own just for fun because that's how we have fun in the asteroid department. I calculated it for fun. It's almost it, almost exactly the same eccentricity of the mission orbit, right? It's like it's 0.14 something. Um, so, yeah, really close. And I just kind of want to show this to you because this is what real life looks like. This The SDK shows uh, in very, very high fidelity what this problem would actually look like. We give you exaggerated diagrams so it's easier to see. I mean, can you imagine if we gave you what SDK is showing because SDK is the real world uh, visualization of what this orbit transfer maneuver would look like, but it's just, it's, it's tough to see. So anyway, uh, just for kicks, I wanted you guys to see what it really would look like if we executed this problem in real life. Um, problems like this are common. We, uh, NASA says we have to burn in satellites within 25 years uh, if they've exhausted their utility. So uh, this kind of problem where we return a satellite from a bigger orbit to burn it back in is is very common and hopefully will get uh, more and more common and with other countries in the world too because there's so much space junk that if we can if we can burn satellites back in uh, after they're done we can hopefully keep uh, those those orbits useful for longer so okay well it was great doing orbits with you and we'll see you next time